I want to thank the organizing committee to give me the chance to share our results about our uh, first experience uh, with fragment screening at the Axcan facility. And uh, as anticipated, we tested the uh, protein trypanotine reductase for screening. Um, we are in the context uh, of uh, trypanoside drug discovery, so I will start with some background of these uh, diseases. Um, Leishmania, let me activate the pointer. Leishmania and trypanosoma are uh, um, eukaryotic human parasites belonging to the family of trypanosomatidae. They comprise uh, many uh, species of parasites uh, causing different kinds of infections that are um, grouped under the name uh, Leishmaniasis, uh, comprising visceral, cutaneous and mucocutaneous uh, forms, and Trypanosomiasis that includes stress disease and sleeping sickness. Um, now, the uh, geographical distribution of these parasites uh, is uh, species dependent. Anyway, they are uh, very spread uh, in the tropical and subtropical areas of the world. Um, and it is estimated that altogether, these parasites affect about 20 million of people and cause 100,000 deaths every year. So in this sense, they are second only to malaria. And besides uh, uh, Leishmania, uh, Leishmaniasis and Trypanosiasis are included among the neglected tropical diseases. It is interesting to note that the parasite Leishmania infantum is endemic in the whole Mediterranean area. So um, even if in Europe the human infection is not uh, very common, in fact, uh, this parasite can infect generally only immunocompromised uh, humans. Um, the parasite Leishmania is very, very spread among uh, animal population, namely um, dogs and wild animals that constitute a reservoir for human uh, infection. In fact, um, Leishmaniasis and trypanosomiasis are considered to be a vector borne zoonosis, meaning that the infection can be transferred, transferred from um, animal hosts to humans uh, through the bite of an insect vector. Um, the insect is species specific. In the case of Leishmaniasis, it is the Phlebotomus and fly that is a uh, uh, tiny and silent mosquito, very diffused uh, in, the, in the Mediterranean uh, region. And clearly upon a, a blood meal by an infected insect, uh, the parasite can be transferred to the human host. Um, currently, the only way to prevent infection is to control the uh, vector population and to prevent uh, the bite. Uh, in fact, uh, currently, there are no uh, available vaccines uh, uh, for these infections. There is only one approved for dogs, but it is not very effective indeed. Uh, for what concerns uh, uh, treatments, uh, all the drugs available for treating these infections uh, have uh, um, severe side effects. They are highly toxic. They are not very effective. Uh, uh, and um, resistance is emerging uh, almost uh, um, everywhere in the world because all of these are old drugs. Um, they require long uh, administration time by injection. Uh, that is uh, particularly um, bad in the case of uh, uh, you know, poor countries. So due to all these reasons, it is clear that there is a huge need for developing new uh, drugs targeting these parasites. In the context of target-based uh, uh, drug discovery, the trypanotion detoxification pathway offers uh, interesting opportunities. Um, in fact, uh, this is the only and essential defense that these parasites have developed against oxidative stress. Um, this part, these parasites lack uh, uh, other systems like catalase uh, and glutathione reductase, and this pathway relies on the peculiar detail trypanotion that is a strange version of glutathione. In fact, it is made by two glutathione molecules merged by a polyamine spermidine moiety. 
um, the path works by transferring, reducing the equivalence from NADPH to peroxides through a chain of uh, active cysteines. All the proteins, the three proteins uh, uh, belonging to this path are essential for parasite survival, but with no doubt, uh, triplanotriol reductase is the most attractive uh, target for the drug development. And I'll show you briefly uh, why. TR is the protein directly responsible for keeping ion in a reduced state uh, at expense of uh, NADPH. It is a homodimer with uh, separate uh, uh, pockets, uh, separate binding sites so for NADPH and tribanotion, and the and the two pockets are separated by the cofactor fat. So NADPH transfers enter its cavity. Transfers to, to electrons are transferred to FAD, then to the two reductive cysteines that are capable to attack tribunotine and reduce it. Now, the fact that uh, uh, there are two um, true subset binding cavities with respect to the other proteins of the PAD indicates that this protein is likely uh, druggable with some limitations, we will see. Um, another interesting characteristic of this uh, target arises from the comparison with the main of target of TR, that is uh, the human protein with the time reductase. TR and GR are homolog, they share um, limited sequence identity, they catalyze similar reactions and have a similar overall fold. But if we compare um, the um, substring binding pockets, some differences uh, arise uh, that reflect the differences of the substrate. Uh, in fact, uh, below we have a picture of the uh, tribunotion in its cavity. And if we compare it with the glutathione cavity, we see that it is wider and uh, it has a very different uh, charge distribution. And uh, uh, these differences in shape and charge of the tooth cavities suggest that uh, it should be possible to develop uh, inhibitors selective for uh, tribunotion reductase. Um, finally, uh, TR from different species uh, are very, very similar. The sequence is highly conserved, especially for what concerns uh, the um, tribunotion and NADP NADPH binding cavities, where sequence similarity reaches 100%, the reaches in uh, purple. So this uh, observation indicates that by targeting TR, it should be possible in principle to develop a wide spectrum trivanocidal compound. Um, and more in general, that results uh, obtained for one TR can be translated to uh, other species. As I said, uh, um, there are not only advantages for TR as a target, but even limitations. Uh, and as anticipated, this is a challenging protein for drug discovery. In fact, uh, it, uh, um, it has been shown by uh, silencing experiments in, uh, in parasite culture that uh, uh, the activity of TR in order to um, significantly affect parasite viability, uh, the activity of the protein must be abolished by at least 90%. It is a very abundant protein in, in, the, in the parasite. It has a high turnover. This means that uh, only very potent inhibitors can be considered as interesting leads for drug development. Uh, we talk about uh, activity in the sub-micromolar, nanomolar range. Moreover, um, as we said, uh, the tribunotion cavity is uh, uh, large and pretty solvent exposed. And this is an issue, uh, even a challenge in the context of structure-based drug development. Um, in the last years, uh, uh, we attempted many different approaches for developing and identifying new leads targeting TR. And very recently, we decided to try uh, fragment screening um, because uh, um, we think that it could be particularly useful in the case of TR, because fragment screening uh, should allow a very detailed mapping of the hotspots 
of the world surface and in particular of the trypanotonic cavity that, as we said, is very challenging. And uh, it should uh, um, allow the identification of new uh, binding sites um, to affect protein activity. So uh, last year, we did uh, a ferment screening experiment at the XCAM platform. I won't tell, uh, we heard uh, uh, any detail about this, uh, this platform from uh, the previous talk, so I won't spend other words. I just want to say that uh, I am really, this is the first time we try this, uh, this approach and I'm very fascinated by it because I believe it is the most rational uh, approach available in the context of structure-based uh, drug discovery. We decided to work with uh, uh, trypanotine reductase from Trypanosoma brucei because uh, it has ideal characteristics for this uh, uh, crystal-based uh, approach. In fact, uh, um, we have a robust crystallization protocol and uh, uh, crystal diffract uh, consistently at uh, quite high resolution up to 1.5, 1.6 angstrom. Um, crystallization condition as such that uh, no cryoproduction step is needed uh, and it is the best uh, um, to allow for quick and easy crystal harvesting. And the crystals uh, resist very well at uh, long soaking time in uh, uh, the MSO at 10 percent, up to 10 percent concentration. So these characteristics make uh, uh, the R from Trivanozoma Bourget the ideal candidate for this uh, approach. We uh, did the first round of uh, uh, fragment screening. We tested more than 300 fragments uh, um, on TR crystals. And the fragments are from the DSIP uh, library. That is a collection of compounds specifically designed to allow for uh, rapid uh, and cheap uh, follow-up synthesis and so to get uh, quick star data. And our um, organic chemist uh, uh, collaborators confirmed for now this, uh, this expectation. So, uh, we analyzed the data by Panda and the XCAM um, platform. Uh, we analyzed uh, uh, around 350 data collections with Panda and that identified automatically 480 events clustered in 33 sites uh, all uh, uh, on the surface of, of the protein. Then by visual inspection, we could uh, uh, select 21 out of 480, 21 true binding events uh, are distributed in eight uh, uh, binding sites. Now, these 21 binding events uh, correspond to 12 different fragment kits, uh, binding to five independent binding sites, considered that the protein is dimeric, so some of the sites uh, are uh, duplicated. Um, now, of these uh, 12 fragments, uh, we found five fragments in the trivalentine cavity, four close to the NADPH binding site, and other four fragments were in sites that for now we consider to be not very interesting. So I won't discuss this. Um, just uh, an overall view of data quality. Uh, data collections are all uh, better than to answer resolution. Um, all the fragments uh, seems to have uh, a good correlation with uh, maps. In fact, the uh, real space correlation coefficient is uh, almost always higher than 0.8. And uh, occupancy, the estimated occupancy for the fragment uh, is between 0.5 and 1 um, uh, value. Now, uh, it is easy to locate ligands when occupancy is full. Uh, but uh, I have been very impressed uh, uh, by the, um, the results, even by Panda analysis, uh, in case of partial occupancy. I want to show you uh, just one example of this. Um, this refers to sample 19, site 14. So occupancy has been estimated as 0.5. In the upper panel, I show you the uh, density, the, the classical 
density that you get from classic analysis by analyzing your just your data set and doing uh, molecular replacement. While in the lower panel, uh, we can see the uh, event map generated by panda analysis. Now, uh, I would never add a ligand in the classic map, while I had no doubt to locate this fragment uh, um, in the event map. So I think that this, this result really impressed me. Now, let's move to the description of uh, the uh, results and so uh, of the fragments. Um, I start from the NADPH binding cavity. Um, we found four ligands bound close to the NADPH site. Here in the picture, I show in green the um, NADPH binding pocket, while in pink, we see the fragment pocket. Uh, we found the four fragments uh, all are located at this pocket, a bit shifted one with respect to the other. Now here I show the NADPH, consider that it is not present in the structure or in the crystallization conditions, and uh, uh, it couldn't bind together with these fragments, and I'll show you why in the next slide. Um, by checking the literature, I found that uh, a very similar pocket to this one has been uh, found a few years ago in uh, another FADMAP dependent rate of taste uh, from uh, the parasite Schistosavamansoni, namely the thyroidoxin the time reductase. And in that case, the authors named this pocket uh, the doorstop pocket. And to understand the reason of this name, uh, we um, must have a look at the general mechanism of uh, NADPH binding in this class of proteins. We have uh, um, conserved aromatic residue that can be phenylalanine or tyrosine uh, located over the uh, FAD um, ring in the uh, NADPH pocket. This is the conformation in the APO uh, form of the protein uh, with the uh, aromatic ring perpendicular to the isolated ring of FAD. Upon NADPH binding, this side chain needs to shift to allow the nicotinamide of NADPH to locate over the FAD for electron transfer. Now, what happens uh, upon fragment binding? Well, the presence of the fragment in this uh, uh, pocket hampers uh, the movement uh, of, of the fragment, so the, the opening of the door. Uh, so in the presence of the fragments, uh, NADPH cannot bind to its pocket. And this is why the pocket has been named a door doorstop. So this means uh, that uh, in principle, um, targeting this uh, doorstop pocket should affect uh, the R activity. Um, now, clearly, to uh, evaluate if uh, uh, this pocket is really suitable for uh, um, selective drug development, we have to evaluate uh, um, potential of targets. Uh, by a quick sequence analysis, we have seen that uh, um, the pocket seems to be present even in others, uh, in other FADNAD dependent uh, uh, reductases. Uh, here I showed example of glutathione reductase, but we should take into account uh, even other human proteins. Um, the pocket is present even in GR, but sequence uh, uh, comparison shows some important and significant substitutions. Here I highlighted with yellow arrows uh, the main differences, the most important differences between the two proteins. And uh, we find some substitution in the, the doorstop pocket. And uh, even more, if we move a bit away from the doorstop pocket, along with this uh, um, cleft that could be targeted uh, if we imagine to develop uh, bigger uh, inhibitors. So in principle, it seems by this first analysis that it should be possible to inhibit selectivity TR by targeting the doorstop pocket. But we um, decided to, um, for now, to focus more on the triple binding cavity. 
Here we found five different ligands, uh, all bound uh, all more or less in the same place, in the same site uh, within the cavity. In this view on the right, uh, you can see um, an overview of the wall pocket. Here I colored in pink uh, the so called mebagrin binding site, that this is the binding site uh, found for most of the inhibitors developed to date against the membrane reductase. As you can see, our fragments are more or less in front of the MBS, um, corresponding to the so-called zeta site. This binding site has been predicted by bioinformatic analysis, but actually it has never been proved, proven and confirmed by um, any experimental evidence. No um, inhibitors are known to bind to this uh, side of the cavity. Here in yellow, I show uh, the cysteines just to give you an idea of where is the catalytic point of the pocket. Now, for of the five fragments uh, uh, seem to be particularly interesting. In fact, three of them, the pink, the green, and the yellow, um, share this piperazine moiety that locates exactly in the same place uh, uh, for all of the three um, fragments. And uh, the piperazine uh, seems to dominate the binding. In fact, there is a strong uh, electrostatic interaction between the charged amino group of the piperazine and the side chain of glutamate. There is shape complementarity and then some hydrophobic interactions in both the fragments. The fourth interesting fragment gets at this sub pocket in the zeta side. Um, the interaction in this case is mainly uh, hydrophobic, uh, according to the character of the pocket, and there is a hydrogen bond with this leucine residue. Um, now, what about uh, the uh, selectivity of the zeta site? Uh, well, if we compare this side of the uh, cavity with uh, uh, glutathione reduction, is we found that uh, uh, almost all of the residues are conserved besides uh, this uh, leucine that is uh, substituted by a methionine. Um, this wouldn't be a very strong difference, but uh, if we move a bit away from the ligand, uh, we will find uh, another important difference between uh, Tripolotan reductase and glutathione reductase concerning this uh, tyrosine that uh, um, substitutes an alanine residue in TR. Now, the presence of this bulky residue has a um, strong effect on the pocket. In fact, uh, due to steric hindrance, uh, this side chain pushes a bit um, the methionine uh, residue. Uh, toward the fragments uh, with the effect uh, to narrow the sub pocket. This means that in GR, this sub pocket uh, is, uh, is smaller than in Tripolitan reductase, uh, indicating that if we want to target selectively uh, the zeta site in TR, we need to target this sub pocket. So, we uh, just started some uh, follow-up uh, of, uh, of these fragments. Um, we are at the very beginning of this process. Uh, we chose to start with the three uh, of the fragments binding the tripanthion cavity, uh, two containing the piperazine ring, uh, and the one targeting the pot. So we merged the first two just by fusing okay, the piperazine. And then we added the second compound, obtaining two uh, different derivatives. We um, did the preliminary testing for uh, activity of these uh, in inhibitors. Here I report the residual activity of TR after treatment with the, the fragments and the derivatives. As expected, we have uh, some effect from the uh, fragments. Surprisingly, uh, the first derivative, the one based of uh, the piperazine fragments, 
seem to have no activity on TR, while the second derivative, the one made by merging three fragments, uh, shows an improvement in the activity. Consider that this uh, effect uh, is surely underestimated because this derivative has uh, uh, solubility issues. Uh, so here the, the concentration is overestimated. In fact, uh, we try to calculate, to determine the IC50 for this uh, uh, compound. And, uh, you know, uh, inhibition increased with concentration up to 20 micromora, then it got stopped. So um, I estimate by I an IC50 no higher than 25, 30 micromola. That is pretty better than the fragments. So even if it is not an impressive activity, we are at a very early stage. And uh, I can say that this improvement in activity indicates that we are probably on the right way. Um, what next? Uh, we obviously want to uh, see the structure of the complex between TR and this uh, um, derivative, active derivative. Um, now some crystals are at the synchrotron, tomorrow they will be tested, so cross your fingers. And uh, we are already working on the design and synthesis on a second generation of derivatives based on these fragments. In particular, we want to optimize the length of the link uh, uh, for the um, pocket targeting fragment. And we are starting to decorate the real moiety. Um, we want uh, uh, to explore the feasibility of targeting uh, um, this newly identified doorstop pocket, because this would uh, uh, clearly be a new um, approach for inhibition of uh, trimal line reductase. Um, and then on July, we are going to perform a new uh, round of uh, PRISA screening again at the XCAM platform. This time we'd like to complete, if possible, the, the SIP uh, library. We tested about half of the, of the collection. And we'd like to um, try to uh, collection of uh, covalent compounds. Uh, so uh, collections of electrophilic compounds designed to target systems. Because in this way, maybe we could get uh, the potency needed uh, to um, effectively inhibit uh, uh, trivalent reductase. So uh, covalent linking of cysteines could give potency while uh, uh, exploiting the fragments or even already known inhibitors of TR could uh, give selectivity. Uh, I want to finish by thanking uh, all the people who have contributed to this work, uh, my collaborators from CNR, uh, Andrea Ilari, Gianni Colotti and Cecilia Zettier. Clearly, I really thank the staff from the XCAM facility, in particular Darren Ferron and Alice de Wangamata, who have been very, very supportive uh, in, in our experiment. Consider that we did this um, uh, experiment during the uh, lockdown, so we couldn't access XCAM, so they did all the practical work at the beamline for us. And finally, I want to thank the medicinal chemists that are collaborating with us, led by Professor Mariano Bolognesi in Bologna University. And I clearly thank you for your attention.